<laughs> last week I did a message and I mean I wasn't people were got the first two minutes there was no sound and some got discouraged. Well good morning. <laughs> good morning everybody. I says good morning to everybody here already, but good morning for those listening on the internet on Facebook. I'm so glad you're listening in and uh so today is a brand new message. A brand new message and I just uh I just want to uh, what do I want? I want people to be touched by this message. In the times we're living in, uh, especially for the body of Christ, we need to know what we carry inside. And so uh, just to start this message, this message is called His Power Within You. His Power Within You. And uh, yeah, how many here really, really believe that God, God always, the Spirit is always there and He's all ahead of, all, always ahead of us? And uh, so I opened my tablet and I look on Facebook this morning and, and Sunday put a post. And it is exactly what I'm going to share this message about. Okay. And so the quote is this. Evangelism is the major instrument of social change. For the gospel changes people and change people can change society. I repeat. Evangelism is the major instrument of social change. Or the gospel changes people, or the word of God changes people, right? The good news of Jesus Christ, right? And change people, people that are changing his image, right? Can change society. So I want to talk about that this morning. I want to talk about the power that you carry inside of your being. I want to start with uh, Luke chapter 17, verse 21. And uh, I know I shared this uh you know, you'll, you're going to see a similarity of what I'm going to be sharing this morning. But uh, let me tell you, it's a little bit different. Okay. It says here, nor will they see, see here or see there. For indeed, the kingdom of God is within you. And then in 1 John chapter 4, and yeah, I'm going to be all over. So you might as well just watch on the board here. <laughs> so 1 John chapter 4, verse 4, it says, you are of God little children and have overcome them because he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. What does that what does that mean? Now if you analyze that, if you have Christ in you, right? If you receive Jesus as Lord, that means that Christ lives in you. So the word of God says, Greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. What does it mean to be in the world? To be in the world is to be without Christ. That's what he's trying to say. You have so much power, overcoming power inside of you. You have light. I'm going to talk about light this morning. You have the very life of God inside of you. And so greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. Meaning the world out there are living in fear. They're living in all kinds of stuff. But the true saints, true people of God, you have the enduring power of God within you to sustain you with everything that the enemy sends your way. And I don't know about you, but I am encouraged about that. And I, I you know, this is what I, I sense here. If people of the world only knew, if the people that are not saved don't know Christ, would only knew the overcoming life that we have as believers, and even some believers, they, they haven't tapped to that power yet. They call themselves believers, but yet they're, they're, they're not fully informed. And many don't read the word, and you have to read the word to know your legal right and, 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 and everything else that comes by serving Christ. But if the people of the world would only know the overcoming power that we have as believers, and that power is there to help us overcome, but also that power transforms us from glory to glory in the image of Christ. That means that we can love people more than you did yesterday. That means you can touch human beings more than you did years ago because you're changing from glory to glory. Amen? And so that's what God expects of us. As we follow God, God's power transforms us. 
You know, where we as true believers should not be the same as they were last year or the year before. We should be totally changed. Why? Because we are changed by what? By the by the the word of God and the presence of God or God himself as we pray and our, uh, you know, Jesus says, abide in me and I will abide in you. Without me, you can't do nothing. That means relationship with God himself, right? And it transforms us. We all know that Jesus came to give eternal life to those who believe in him. But he also came to give e even more than that to his true followers. Jesus came to make people free from the devil's grip and mindset. In Acts 26... It says some awesome truth there. Just one verse. Verse 18. It says to open their eyes so they may turn from darkness to light from the power of Satan to God. So when you become a believer, you're not Satan's territory. You're not God's under God's authority. Then they will receive forgiveness for their sins and be given a place among God's people who are set apart by faith in Him. In 1 Peter 2.9 it says this, But you are not like that, for you are a chosen people. You are a royal priest, a holy nation, God's very own possession. But note this, as a result, you can show others the goodness of God. That's light. That's the power within, right? For he call you out of darkness into his wonderful light. You can see here what a true believer is supposed to do. As a result, you can show others the goodness of God. God expects his people to shine their light. That's why I put some songs like that this morning. Right? I am, I have a light. I'm going to let it shine. Shine in the day. Shine in the night. Right? Okay. So God expects his people to shine the light. Right? What is God's light? It's the glory of God. I'm going to go deep in the word this morning. I'm going to reveal some stuff that you probably didn't see. and Because uh, uh, this message is a little bit, when I go, uh, go further, you can realize, where did he get that? Well, by the Spirit of God. So Jesus came to bring light, which is both a revelation of him, right? Because the more light, uh, uh, you, you tend to get to know him more and more. Okay? And also revelation of the truth of the word of God. So the more you have him, the more you read the word, the more God says, okay, son or my daughter, I'm going to reveal more what I meant when I said that. And so there's a revelation of the word of God. And also there's a, a deeper depth of his presence and love inside our being. That's the power within. That's when you feel loved by God and God wants us to live like that. And it, it all, it's all to open the eyes of the blind as to who God is and also to make his people feel alive from inside. This part I cover quite often. But, you know, God, that's why Jesus says, you know, out of your being will flow rivers of living water. That's not just something he said. You can literally experience the presence and love of God as a river. Sometimes when I pray in another language, I can feel that river. Sometimes when I read the word of God, the river flows because God is, is I don't know how it works. I just don't know. But I, all I know is that God does it, right? So what does God, what, what does God's light do for us? In 1 Corinthians chapter 2, uh, Dan's going to put it on the board there. There's a few things we need to notice here. It says that, that is why the scriptures mean when they say, No eyes has seen, no ear has heard, and no mind has imagined what God has prepared for those who love him. See, light, revelation, okay? But it, was, it is, was to us that God revealed these things by his spirit. For his spirit searches out everything and shows us God's deep secrets. That's the spiritual life that we're called to have, right? So no one can know a person's thoughts except person's own spirit. And no one can know God's thoughts except God's own spirit. If you would just look at the board, you'll see it instead of flipping two pages there. <laughs> I'm gonna, anyway, it's just up to you guys, whatever. 
And we have received God's spirit, not the world's spirit, so we can know the wonderful things God has really given us. This is the goal that God has. He wants to us to know things by the spirit of God. Then it continues in verse 14. But people who aren't spiritual can't receive these truths from God's spirit. That means those are not saved. Those who do not have the Holy Spirit in them. Everything is spiritual. What is happening in the world right now and all this, this mess is all spiritual. It's all spiritual. Right? Nothing that happens in the world is not what of the world spiritual. So in the world above the earth right now, people of the world that don't know Christ, they don't understand what's going on. But the people of God should know what's going on. There's a battle for human beings on in the realms of the spirit right now. And the enemy wants to discourage and bring havoc and bring all these things. So if you would literally see in the heavenlies right now, as the saints, the people of God pray, the angels of God are fighting against the, angel of, the angels of darkness, whether it's over nations, whether it's over your personal life and your family. But as the people of God pray, angels fight for you. If God would open your eyes, you would see that, right? Because everything has to do, it's spiritual. Everything that happens on the earth, is a, it's a spiritual attack upon human beings. And God expects his people to know exactly that's what's happening right now. So that's why God, through Paul, he, he penned this. Because our inheritance is to know things in advance, to know God's thoughts. For us to know what's happening, you know, to have, and so unfortunately, there's many believers out there, they don't even have a clue what is happening. And they get discouraged. We should not be discouraged. I told months ago, I said, God wants us to bind and to loose. To bind and to loose. We are the authority on the earth right now. It's not the governments of the world, they can see whatever they say. But if the people of God pray and understand in the realms of the spirit, things are happening, the, all you need to do is to pray. And people, uh, and many, many that call themselves Christians right now, they say and do things that offends God without them realizing it. They gossip, they mock, they do things. And yet if they would only understand, they would only understand that you don't even know what you're talking about. And then they, they wonder, why do we post some posts and certain posts? And it's because we know what's going on. And it breaks my heart. I'm talking about what's happening in the president, presidency right now. And what's happening in our own country with, with uh, all these things. There's so many things that are happening. And people have no clue what's going on. It's very hard to know things by the Spirit of God. And people don't know really what's happening. And if they don't watch and what's ahead, if God does not intervene, I'm telling you, this earth is in for a show. I'm, I, I don't want to scare anybody. I'm telling you. I, I know well, one day the people of God will, will disappear. And I'm telling you it's going to be super bad. But in the meantime, you know, if, if people would know it's the people of God are keeping things fairly decent still. If it wouldn't be the light, the power of God, the love of God through saints praying and, uh, and dispatching light, life. Creating life and changing scenes in uh, people's situation and, and, and binding and loosing. This earth would be in a terrible mess. And so God is counting on his saints. Right? It says there in verse 14, But the people who aren't spiritual, that's those, those have no clue, those who have no Holy Spirit. Because when you get saved, you get the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit opens your eyes. If you're not saved, if you, if you take your born in a Christian family, and uh, you've never received, you're just a denominator, you're just somebody that got born in a family, never committed to Christ, you will never understand what I'm talking about. Never. Because you don't have the Spirit of God. The Bible is very clear. You need the Spirit of God to understand Scripture and to understand God. That's easy as that. And so that's what Paul is saying here. But people who aren't spiritual can't receive these truths from God's Spirit. It all sounds foolish to them. And they can't understand it for only those who are spiritual can understand what the Spirit means. 
those who are spiritual can evaluate things. Right now, those who are spiritual, they're evaluating things. I am evaluating things right now. I don't know about you in your walk, but I see things happening right now, and I says, no, in the name of Jesus. I come against that. That's God expects his people to, to, to pray for certain things. In your own family, I forbid it. That's why Jesus says, I give you the keys of the kingdom of God. Whatever you bind on earth will be loose in heaven. Whatever you, you, know, whatever you uh, bind on earth and loose on earth will be loose in heaven. Meaning you, you, you forbid the enemy to do certain things and then you allow you, you, uh, you say, Holy Spirit, do this. You understand? Authority to create has been given to the church. Hard to believe, but it's true. In love, though. You know, you don't do it because of revenge. You do it because you love God. Everything we say and do has to be with love for God and love for people. And if God hears that, God will obey, dispatch the angels. And then it finishes with this. Uh, those who are spiritual can evaluate things, but they themselves cannot be evaluated by others. For who can know the Lord's thoughts? Who knows enough to teach him. But we understand these things for we have the mind of Christ. And so we live in a world right now. There's two types of viewpoints. The first viewpoint is people are not saved. So those who don't see clear by not having their spiritual eyes open to the truth about God and what is happening around the world. I just shared that. So there is... There's two, two, two views on the world right now. People that know what ha is happening and the people of God that know exactly what's happening. But I could add an, a, another one is many in the body of Christ don't, don't re truly know yet what's happening because they're not tapped into the Holy Spirit. But they should know. They should know. And then those who have their spiritual eyes open to those who, who, uh, to what God is ha what's happening in the world. They see clearly only, only because the Holy Spirit lives in them. Those who don't see clearly are under the devil's control and they act like it. They don't realize. You know, one of the hardest things is, is that, you know, me, sometimes I look at, well, I, I, I open Facebook to be able to reach people. And I see some quotes, some people saying things, nasty things on the internet. And you know, some of them call themselves Christians, but yet are you like, I mean, how, how can you say that? How can you post that? And it breaks my heart, but it, can you imagine what, how much it breaks God's heart to mock people? To make want people to believe the way you believe? When lo and behold, they don't even know the life of that person. They don't even know nothing, no clue. As an example, I don't want to go very politics here. But if they would only, President Trump, he's, he's far from being perfect. Oh, God. He's a baby believer. Okay? He said some stuff, but the media concentrates on that. And without people that are not, not saved, they are maneuvered in the way they want them to think. Because there's another government ruling the world. It's called the globalists. P-I-R-K-Y. People sold out for the devil. Sa Satanists. Uh, people of the world, oh, yeah, that's true. Well, they don't really believe that, but it's true. As a matter of fact, man, many of them, all these babies are missing. I just want to, I'm going to say the truth here. They drink the blood, they eat the flesh of those babies that gives them, them strength. People in the world don't know that. But that's what they're happening. It sounds gross, but that's what is happening. And so they're so demon-possessed right now. They want These people want to control the earth. Us believers, we know that, but people are not believers. They don't know that. They think, oh, that's just a conspiracy. It is not a conspiracy. It's true fact. Epstein and all that, there, that's true fact. That's what all these emails, the, you know, I don't want to get in politics, but I'm just saying. So when you know stuff like that, it's very hard. It's very hard to see people. They don't even know. They think they know their thoughts. You're not. I'm telling you, people think right now, they think that the world will be back to normal. Uh-uh. You might have taught that before, but not now. Not now. This is it. This is it. And, and the globalists, 
they want to do a reset. And we have to forbid that. Do you know what a reset is? A reset is that they want to shut down the whole economy of the earth right now. Okay? And start back. And the government's going to own you. They're going to own your property. They're, gonna, they're promising to pay your debts. Mr. Uh, Mr. The liberal government just released that. They released that a few weeks ago. Somebody, there's 30% of the liberal government. I don't want to go to politics, but, but they have released it. They want to shut down. That's why they, want, they don't want people, they wear a mask, and, and they want to push a vaccine. If you don't take the, anyway, it's a long story. They're going to push you in camps. Anyway, that's their agenda, written agenda. Even Ronnie Albert Brown was sharing stuff like that yesterday. He was sharing... I, uh, I've, I've known that for quite a long time. He's known that. But it's never shared behind the pulpit. We will not go back to where we were. I'm sorry. This is the end time. This is where we're at. And either you use your authority to, to pray, to bind and to loose and forbid, and push back the enemy because the Antichrist wants to come on his seat. And if it's not his time, God expects his church to pray and to bind and to loose. And to forbid it. I don't want to scare anybody, but this is this is true fact. Their plan is November, December, and then all next year. If they get away with it. But I don't know about you, but my watch, that's why I keep posting. Bind and loose. Forbid. Command them. I'm telling you. God is counting on his people. It's no time to play church. It's time to get serious with God. I could go on and on what they want to do, but I'm telling you. This vaccine they want to put there, don't take it. No. So those who see clearly and have Holy Spirit living in them, act more and more like God's people as they mature. But those who are not spiritual, they act like the devil. They will think like the devil. They will do things like the devil. There are men, see, people are like Muppets right now. If people would only know, right? There's probably only one news station or two right now that really are not under these people's control. All the rest, all the politicians, all the de education system, these people have infiltrated the education system for years now, the political system. The seven mountains that control the, 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 the banking system, the, the media, the, especially the media is the biggest because you can control people. Right? People think they can think by themselves. You are not thinking by yourself. If you watch too much news, okay, you're, they're, they're transforming people in their own image. The American people, instead of reading the people of God, we need to read the word. So if you listen to news all the time, you will actually start thinking like that because they want you to think like that. But they, they think they're so, so strong and, you know, they know everything. You don't know nothing because they're playing like you like a Muppet, right? God expects his people to know stuff. And it makes me sad. I see posts and I say, if they would only know. If they would only know what's coming and if they wouldn't know how God loves them. And if they want to know about this guy here, did they, did they bash and laugh at him? He wants them blessed. But he's been hated. I'm talking about Trump. He's been hated. He's been talked about and mocked and all that. But he's changed so many laws. So many laws. To bring back the godly principles in his nation. And they're hangry at that. That's why they try to accuse him. And never, they never got anywhere. Why? They spent millions and millions. Because there's no truth in that. And people are lewd on that. And I just don't want to talk about it. But I'm just saying this is true. Light. Light, God's light, revelation knowledge by the Spirit of God shows us that. We know that by the Spirit of God. It's very hard to carry that. It's very hard to live like that. But the thing is, that's where we're at. Jesus says that, I believe, I see like Ronnie Harbour Brown was saying yesterday, we're not in a, in a tribulation yet, but where were Jesus prophesied that tribulation will come. Meaning things are going to increase on the earth. You're going to see things. That's where we're at. We're not. The church is going to be taken one day. We don't know when. But right now, these things will multiply. Jesus says, like bird pain. So expect it. 
I'm not scared. So this light comes when we receive Jesus as Lord, Lord and Savior. And then we start reading the Word of God. And also when we spend time talking to Him, the Holy Spirit download comes. So this light comes supernaturally by the Holy Spirit. Now I want to share something with you that God showed me. Now I went, I went, I went, uh, you know, commentaries. I always want to because when I get revelation knowledge, I, I just, okay, well, let's see how many, these commentaries, what do you think about this scripture and these commentaries? And, and now, um, well, that's not what God showed me. Jesus showed me about this scripture. This, anyway. And so, uh, in Luke chapter 13, verse 18, then if you can put it there, Jesus says this. So Jesus is trying to explain the kingdom of God, right? And I shared the kingdom of God, for, but this has nothing to do. I'm going in within, within uh, um, the changes that God does within a person and around them in the world. So Jesus, he wants to teach the kingdom of God, how it operates in the supernatural realm. Okay, in the realms of the spirit. So Jesus said, what is the kingdom of God like? Uh, now can I illustrate it? It is like a tiny mustard seed that a man planted in a garden. It grows and becomes a tree, and the trees make nests in its branches. Now some, the, the, <laughs> some, some commentaries, I don't know why, maybe I'm not normal, but I've always seen that because Jesus is talking about the kingdom of God. He's not talking about the kingdom of darkness. He's talking about the kingdom of God. Right? And he's showing us a picture of how it operates. So Jesus here is saying, and is telling us that one word from God can bring so much transformation in you that people are going to be lured to you and then the ministry that you carry. In a nutshell, one word from God, when God enters a human being, Okay, in your life, you're going to be so there. Are, people are supposed to be attracted to you that after a while, people will gather around you because they want to feel that love and that light. That's what Jesus was saying. And the birds of the air, that's what birds are attracted. They're very sensitive. The Holy Spirit showed me that they're very sensitive. And so they, they just gather in trees to find shelter, to find. Uh, some they, they drink the leaves, whatever. They, they find, and so we as believers, Jesus is saying that we're supposed to be so attractive that out of all that, people are attracted to And after a while, some of us will have ministries to touch human lives. That's what Jesus is saying. He was talking about a supernatural empowerment in us as believers to be able to touch human lives around us. That you're not a... You're a magnet for people, right? Not all people. And because I could go in another scripture, it says that for some, Paul says, that we are an aroma of death, and for some, we're an aroma of life. But people can sense there's something different. So the gospel of the kingdom is designed to bring life. It's supposed to bring hope to the hopeless. Right? That's what we carry. The blessed hope. Jesus, Christ in you. Glory to God in the highest. Right? That's what we're supposed to bring. We're supposed to be a spiritual magnet. And then, the gospel of the kingdom is supposed to penetrate every part of society just like leaven. That's why Jesus didn't finish there. So he gave one principle of the kingdom. Then he jumps in another one. He, he jumps in this one. The verse right after that. See here he's explaining the supernatural power of the gospel of Jesus Christ in a human being and what it does around you. Right? So he, he goes with this one. In Luke chapter 13 verse 20. He also asks, what else is the kingdom of God like? It is like the yeast of a woman used in making bread, even though she put only a little yeast in three measures of flour, it permeated every part of the dough. So, so God puts people on the earth, 
He saves them and they penetrate society and uh, uh, without them realizing they create an effect and will change a whole society. That's what God expects with his people. You change the whole society. It starts with one person. People are drawn to the light. And then suddenly you have a ministry or whatever it could be. It could be in your own family. You become attra uh, they, uh, you attract people and you change. Or you infiltrate a certain place in your work area. And suddenly people are touched or, or are healed or delivered or are or, or, or especially saved. Because the gospel message is, 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 is to, to enter the enemy's camp and to, to, to bring havoc to his kingdom. By the love of God flowing from his people. That's what it is. That's what Jesus is trying to say. It permeates. It damages the enemy's stronghold. It brings life when there, there used to be death and despair, discouragement and all that. Suddenly there's life. And that's what Jesus was trying to say here. It changes circumstances. Where the enemy meant for bad turns into good. And it comes by even just a small amount of faith. Just a small of faith for pe from people. Then this small seed of faith can supernaturally bring changes to the whole world around you. Just like yeast mixes and creates changing results in the dough, so it goes with the power of God. The word of God, the presence of God. Amen. And so that, that's what God expects his people. And in this world that we live right now, we are asked by God to create change. You are going to meet a lot of people that are discouraged pretty soon. Even now, people are losing their jobs. Lost their jobs. We're supposed to bring them in. You have the light to bring people in. If you love Jesus with all your heart, I'm telling you, you who can change a human soul, you can change a whole family, you can change a whole nation if you want to, as God moves in a powerful way. Even now, you know what? You know, I'm on the internet. You know why I'm on the internet? You know why I'm it's because I want people to have hope. The church of Jesus Christ is created to bring hope to the homes, to heal the sick. Raise the dead, cast out demons. People say, well, you know, that's for last years past. No, that's not. Dude. Having faith and having an open heart willingly is key for success. That is why Jesus said the following. And I'm going to get very serious here. All these things can happen. But unfortunately, only 25% of people professing Christ are hearing the gospel news, or the good news, and they're going to actually be able to do that. Jesus gave an explanation like this in Luke chapter 8, and I'm not going to share the, the part just before that about the seed in the ground and all that, but this, his disciples want to know what he was saying, and this is what Jesus is saying. Luke 8, 11. This is the meaning of the peril. The seed is God's word. The seed that fell, that's, God, that's God's word. What he says, what you declare, right? The seed that fell on the, wood, the footpath represent those who hear the message only to have the devil come and take it away from their hearts and prevent them from, being, uh, from believing and being saved. Even now, people are probably listening to, and the enemy is right, right away, he wants to kill that seed of the gospel, of the good news, of how God loves them and cares for them, and all they have to do is turn to Christ. And the enemy will come, and people show disinterest, and the enemy is just going to, just make him not even think about it. They'll change channel, well, change go and So that's what the enemy does, right? Verse 13, the seed on a rocky soil represents those who hear the message and receive it with joy. But since they don't have deep roots, they believe for a while, then they fall away and when they face, when they face temptation. So many get discouraged in the body of Christ. They don't get, they don't have what they are praying for or what they are believing for because they got discouraged. Then uh, verse 4, the seeds that fell among the thorns represent those who hear a message, but all too quickly the message is crowded out for the cares and riches and pleasures of this life, and so they never grow in maturity. So God 
you know, it, here it's talking a lot about the fruits of the Spirit too, the character of God being formed in believers, right? And then finally in verse 15, And the seed that fell on the good soil represent honest, good-hearted people who hear God's word, cling to it, and patiently produce a huge harvest. And some scriptures will say 60, 80, and 100 fold, I think. Okay, it doesn't say this here. So 75% of people, when they hear the word of the gospel, they hear the good news, they hear something, 75% fail. But 25%, according to Jesus statistics, make it, are successful. So it's all about open hearts and perseverance, especially during trials. Right? Jesus finishes by saying that some produce a huge harvest, meaning changes come in the natural realm. And again, I it, it's talking a lot about the fruits of the Spirit, but also, um, you know, um, I put a few examples. Changes like a changed heart, meaning a bad person into turns into a good person. How many how many testimonies have you heard in the past? How a person was so mean and uh, even even people that are murderers and stuff like that, they turn to Christ and they become like, wow, super transformed by the Spirit of God. Well, that's the light of God. That's God created a change in their heart, right? Uh, or some, somebody is stuck in a bad situation and they persevered and they hang on to the promise of God and then they see a supernatural miracle happen because they never gave up. And many today that I know are facing things that they need a miracle. Don't give up. Keep persevering. Jesus says, whatever you ask, you will have. Keep praying. It will come. And then another one I shared, from a desperate village of our country to a life-giving, prosperous one. We have a missionary here. I'm sure she's seen it quite often, where because of the kingdom of God, because of Christians went there, are doing a work there, they're changing and transforming a village. That's what God expects, light. When light comes, changes happen. You change everything around. What the enemy meant for bad turns into good. People get blessed. I remember watching years ago, I don't know, how do you call that? The, uh, they made a few videos about where uh, the, um, what do you call that? Uh, transformation. Remember that? The series they did a few where uh, there, was a, there was a revival that broke out. You know what happened to those places, those villages? People would grow and they would sue. Before, before, before God moved there, there was no fruit, no vegetable. Everything was dead. The village was dead. The crime level was high. And the Spirit of God moved in that village, transformed the people, emptied the jails, emptied the hospitals. People would sow, farmers would sow, and then we'd have, they would show pictures of fruits and pictures of, uh, of vegetables. So huge. So huge was supernatural. Why? Because God's light went there. God's gospel, the power of God, transform a whole village. That's what we can do as believers. Amen? And then finally, from a desperate, discouraged, depressed state to a life full of hope, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. That's what God can do. And I'm going to close there this morning because I have more to say. And I want to, you know, next week, uh, uh, next week we have uh, George might be here and minister. So just want you to uh, let you know. So I'm going to shut uh, George, you know, George from North Bay. So I'm going to invite somebody. If you, I th he's going to sing some songs. I'm not sure if he's going to minister. I told him, I says, you got, <clears throat> it's not fully promised yet, but you never, you know, as far as I know, he, he might be coming. So expect something different next, next week. Different message. And so that means I'm going to finish this message the week after, right? So if we're still here. <laughs> so I'm just saying like that. So, so God transforms people, right? That's his heart. God goes in human beings and he, he wants us to be sold out for him. And it's all done by his spirit. It's done by him. And every one of us has something to give. Don't think you don't have something to give. When you pray for somebody, even though you're far away, God showed me that through a man of God years ago. You know when you extend you extend your hand to pray, when a minister says, extend your hand, 
this minister God opened his eyes and he saw in a supernatural realm because he had an encounter in heaven with God and came back. Long story. But he says, you know, when you extend your hands like that, light beam, light beam, a light beam goes there. And if you, let's say, like I'm praying, I'm praying for Brenda. A light beam, a light beam goes and brings life, transforms. When you speak, when you speak things, don't take it lightly. When you speak and you pray, God, you're creating something if it's done in love. You're changing the atmosphere. You're changing somebody's life. You're bringing life. That's what God expects his people to do. Amen. That's the power. Now, I shared for a few weeks, three weeks in a way, the uh, road, the, 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 um, uh, the kingdom about the, uh, the benefits of the kingdom. Well, one of the greatest benefits is the power to overcome the world. To overcome whatever the enemy sends our way. Don't touch. Arrows come, bounce back. I tell the enemy, I says, Lord, bring that accusation back to him. Shoot him back. Right? So we have authority. And God changes us from within. Remember what I just shared to that. You know, the kingdom of God is to, 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 to chain a human being. God loves people so much. Do you know that? And what the enemy, people say, well, why, why doesn't God do anything? If God is so much love and he cares for us, how come he's allowing this? God is not in charge of planet Earth. The Christians are. And he's counting on believers. God's heart is broken with all the crime and stuff happening. But he's not on charge. We are. The believers are. We're the ones who are supposed to create change. But no, some like to big buy, buy, back by each other on the internet and whatever. You know, just... And the enemy laughs his head off because the, the more you fight one another, the more nothing gets done. So God expects his people. God loves people. He hates what's going on. And he's counting on the prayers of his people to shine their light in public. And to pray, and to declare, and to do things. Now I'm just going to get serious with whoever's watching on the internet. If you're listening to me, and that's my heart. If one, even one is listening. And if you've never received Jesus as the Lord. If you don't have a clue what I'm talking about. Because these things are spiritual. If you have never received Jesus as Lord. Jesus came to give life and more abundantly. And I'm telling you, there's no other life than the life of Christ. Seriously. And so I just pray that you, you will do this. I'm just going to say a prayer. But if you're sincere and you want that life and you want to feel alive inside, you need Jesus. Jesus died for your sin. And he took your sins. He took the world's sins. And all. if you receive him as your Lord, then all your sins are forgiven. All the things you did in the past. And you start a brand new life called being born again. Or the new birth. Or there's so many. And so if you want that, just follow me. Say, Lord God. I realize. That I'm a sinner. And I need a savior. And I thank you. That Jesus shed his blood on the cross for me, rose on the third day, and he's alive and well in heaven. And he, he wants me to have eternal life. So from this day forth, I receive Jesus as my Lord and Savior, and I will serve him with all my heart. Amen. If you do that, it's so simple to get saved. You know, I, I shared to a brother, and he took the, to me at face value, he got saved. I didn't have to do anything. He did it, right? Because Jesus, God, is listening. So if you've done that, you got born again. And then your life, your eyes, your spiritual eyes will be open. Read the Bible, start with the book of John, Romans, and I'm telling you, you're an adventure for your life. Thanks for watching. And uh, hopefully you'll tune in next week. Amen.